Hello and welcome from the Institute of Korean Studies at Friar University Berlin for today's lectures. My name is Dr. Kang Ho Jae. I'm a research professor at the Institute of Korean Studies. My major and research topic is North Korea, especially history of science, technology, and policy in North Korea. Uh, the topic of today's lecture is visiting and traveling North Korea. Today's lecturer is Jung Jae Yeon. In 2018, she has visited North Korea as a tourist, and the next year, 2019, she traveled North Korea once more. After she returned back, the borderline of North Korea was closed because of COVID-19, not because of her. She enjoyed a guided tour, but she was so lucky to get a chance to travel a rural area of North Korea, and she could enjoy the rare experience of homestay instead of staying in hotel. She visited a high school of North Korea, which is located in Hamgyong province, not in Pyongyang. I think she can be a kind of YouTuber of mukbang. She enjoys so many of the food in North Korea. If you see her mukbang, the main image of North Korea, which was depicted by media, is not there anymore. She said during the trips, she has learned so much and her perspective on North Korea was changed. So she wanted to share what she learned and what she felt. As a researcher of North Korea, just learned North Korea with document without any chance to visit there, I have learned so much from her experience. I think her trips would be a kind of field trips. Now, let's listen to her result of field work on North Korea. Uh, before then, uh, I will introduce you Ms. Jung jae Yeon. She is an English teacher and a travel blogger uh, with a passion for exploring exciting destinations and writing about their culture and food. Born and raised in South Korea, she visited North Korea in 2018 and 19, publishing her first North Korean travel blog, travel blog A Day in Life uh, Visiting North Korea in 2019. She has given numerous presentations about North Korean travel experience. Currently, Ms. Jung wants to get an MA degree in TESOL from Bond University in Australia. Ms. Jung, uh, it's your time. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Jay. Um, you can just call me Jay. My Korean name is rather a little long and hard to pronounce it. I am uh, currently living in South Korea, and I teach English as well. In my free time, I write about food and culture of many countries that I've visited in the past, before the coronavirus. And um, I made a, this beautiful tour to North Korea uh, two times a uh, years ago. As a South Korean, I was born and raised in South Korea for about 20 years. And the trips that I've made three years ago has given me a chance to um, change my perspective of North Korea. And I would like to share that process and our experience with you tonight. Now, it's, it's really hard to deny that visiting North Korea is a very different experience from visiting most other countries in a way that a lot of people think that North Korea is a bit of mythical land. In fact, until I entered North Korea, my perspective on North Korea was not any different. It might have been even worse than most of you here today. Okay, so today, as you are well aware, I'm going to share my trips to North Korea with you. If I had to put it short and in one sentence to describe my experience, I would say I had a happy, lovely, and delightful time, not only in Pyongyang, but also um, in North Hamgyong province. The northernmost a part of North Korea, I guess, which will be a large part of uh, my story of the day. So if it weren't for COVID-19, I've already been um, there a few more times. But yeah, not kidding, really. But I must tell you this. I never imagined that I would consider the North Korean tour the most incredible trip of my life ever. Before I start, I just want to throw questions. Can anyone here guess why I felt my trips to North Korea was a, such a wonderful and beautiful tour. Can anyone really guess? 
Yeah, of course. Well, North and South Koreans are still technically at war. We're just in a state of truce at the moment, as you, I'm sure you all know that. Um, it's because I was born and raised in South Korea until I moved to Australia when I was about 19 and 20. And actually, it was my family and friends who made me feel terrified about going before I even started the trip. I know you wouldn't be able to feel the same way I felt, but I briefly walk you through my upbringing so that at least you can understand the changes in my view that I felt of North Korea before and after the trips. I grew up with the parents who were educated in anti-communism. Um, even my grandparents went through the Korean War themselves. I don't need to tell you more about what they think of North Korean, right? They really hate North Korean. I, I don't want to say this, but they really hate it. It's a strong word, but they do. Um, their reaction was indescribable when I told them that I was going on a trip to North Korea, and they all said in unison that I was mad. And I was just too crazy. But anyway, you know, I like to think about that in this way. I was actually apprehensive about the trip too. You know, if you want to know the truth, I'm the normal human being. If you're scared, I'm scared too, right? But I'm going to think about that this way. And then that's just how I convinced my parents before I went. None of them has ever been to North Korea in person, have they? So I pretended to be a, just a crazy person, as I described, and decided to go. And this is how my first historical trip to North Korea began. It was November 2018. Um, you will get a glimpse into various places I've visited and the food I had and the people I've uh, met and eaten and talked with. Please note that in advance that I do not have any political views on traveling to North Korea and in this talk too, okay? My first trip was 2018 November. I spent five days in Pyongyang, Kaesong, and South Pyongan province for five days. The second trip was in June 2019. We started in North Hamgyong province. I didn't even know that was a rare chance. Really, I didn't know it. We spent about five days there with the local people and then moved to Pyongyang on a domestic flight from Changjin Airport. Um, there might be several ways to enter North Korea, but no matter where you start, I'm pretty sure you have to go through China, I think. So there are a few ways. Uh, on my first trip, I went from Seoul to Beijing and boarded Korean Air for the first time. There's only one flight um, a day. And the second time, I did cross the Dongun Bridge on foot that connects North Korea and China. The, the big difference between the two is the price and convenience. There is an additional 50 euros or something if, each way if you want to take the flight. Uh, you see that in um, the screen. There are three photos I prepared for you. The place you see in the photo are Tumen City in China. They call it Tumen City, facing North Korea right in front of eyes. It may take about 10 minutes or 20 minutes maximum to walk, I believe. That's really close. And there is the Tumen River, you see that, um, flowing over that ugly barbed wire. You cannot get over that, it's illegal there too. The bridge is set to be about 100 meters long, but I felt like it was even longer. You see that on the left, far left picture, there are three guys. They were Korean, North Koreans. I got to talk to them and they told me that they often travel to and from China for business. I didn't know they can really leave their country for business, but according to them, it's it's easy. So, okay, it's easy. There is a borderline dividing China and North Korea in the middle of the bridge. As soon as you arrive in North Korea, you can see on the far right photo, you'll see a man standing at the customs office. Not in the custom, but they double check. So they check your passport first. You go through that customs guy, and if everything goes okay, you will get to meet the local tour guides outside the building, the North Korean side, waiting for you. So going through customs can be a lot easier than you think. If you remember what you can and cannot bring into North Korea, which is really important, um, to travel North Korea, you must work with the North Korean specialized travel agency, not North Korean 
agency, but then specialize in North Korean tours. Choose the travel you want and apply for visa, and the travel agent will take care of everything. You cannot meet directly or contact with the North Korean authorities during this process. No, no. So most tour packages are group tours, a maximum of 30 people worldwide because they apply um, online together and leave. They meet in Beijing first and leave North Korea together. It's um, it's challenging and demanding process, but it's all good. They take care of everything. You pay for that though. Um, there is an independent travel option you can take too, but that doesn't mean that you can go anywhere you like alone, unguided. It's impossible. North Korea, it's not the place where you can just have your backpack and just go with the map. No, you can choose where you want to go and what you want to eat and what kind of activities you want to take. And that's all you can do. You still have about five local guides around you. Nice and safe. That's really <laughs> Good thing, I think. Okay, before we go farther, um, let's think about what thing you can bring into North Korea. I've got a, a nice quiz here. Which of the following four items you see can be brought into North Korea? Can anyone really think? There are a few things you can actually take in. This may come as a surprise, as it did to me. You can take electronic devices like phones, iPads, laptops, and even your camera. No problem. But you can't carry stand-alone GPS devices or books, um, any books in Korean or in German. I, I don't think you can take books, um, according to them anyway, especially if it's a book related to North Korea. Even if it's a, just a travel brochure that give you information where to go, you can't take them with you. They, You're not allowed to. Uh, if I'm not wrong, the Bible is a big no-no too. So if you look at this one, Take comfortable clothes with you. Some places may require you to wear a formal dress, like Kumsusan Palace or what they call it. So it wouldn't hurt to bring a decent outfit. So no clothing with political slogans or anything like that, you know. Just use your discretion when it comes to etiquettes. I think it's etiquette to do some um, homework before getting into a place where, you know, there are set rules that you must follow. Always good to have enough cash with you because you can't use a traveler's check or credit card for shopping there. It's a surprising. I was asked to bring a flashlight and hand sanitizers and wet wipes just in case, but I use them all every time while I was there too. Okay, when you arrive in Beijing after preparing all of this and you're ready to go, right? But you still have one more very important thing to do. You should have a short meeting held by your travel agent about the rules to follow in North Korea. This meeting is super duper important. Um, there are rules you must follow while traveling, but if you break any of them or major one, the entire trip will be canceled and no refund. And your local guys will be in big trouble. So really, really be careful. So make sure to try to pay attention to these rules. Forget the concept of independent or adventurous travel. Just forget about this, please. You will always be surrounded, protected by local guides, plus your travel agents from China that you left it together with. Most importantly, don't talk about anything politically sensitive about their leaders. Leaders are not leaders there, they're God. So it is uh, very rude to mention the names of the past or the present North Korean leaders. You just don't call their names at all. Just don't ask questions. So do not break any rules of that. See, you will see a lot of those statues everywhere you go. And just be careful when you take photos of them uh, in the background. You don't do like that or these. Okay, you're not allowed to do that. So just, just you know, show some respect. That, Like I say, the leader seems to be uh, revealed as divine being beyond just the role of a leader, you will see a lot of statues and portrait of them everywhere you go, even on the subway and every household have their photos. That's amazing. And they just go, I don't know whether they do pray or not, but it's something they do. So after attending the meeting, it's a short one. I finally got my North Korean visa card. See, um, North Korean government never oh, regime never uh, stem the entry exit stem on the passport of the travelers, but on this visa card. I heard that you should um, have a North Korean 
embassy or something in your country to be able to get the stamp on your passport. Otherwise, you will just get a stamp on this card and you can't take them with you. They take it away anyway before you left the country. For information, we cannot keep this card, like I said. Local guys will always keep the visa and passport for security reasons. I don't know what the security reasons mean here, but anyway, you'll get it back once your travel is over. So look at the uh, visa. It's a thin piece of paper that is uh, barely the size of your palm of your hand. Inside, when you open it, your personal information is well recorded. Okay. So it was first time I saw Korea Air before my eyes. Um, I don't know why, but I thought, you know, it's a little bit embarrassing really to um, even talk about this. But I thought the North Korean planes were some sort of... Um, ancient plan with the propellers or something. I don't know why I had that thought in my mind. Such misconception I had was massive that it kept my mouth shut during the whole trip and it was better that way, I'm telling you. The plane I used was an ordinary one. Interestingly, Korea Air receives the lowest score in airline service satisfaction every year. Did you guys know that? And did you guys know the reason? The reason was really interesting. Of course, there may be more than one reasons for that. But the most interesting reason was the in-flight meal. I, I cannot still believe that they uh, score it lowest because of the hamburger was not tasty. Come on. Okay, now I'm going to show you the photo of a hamburger. Looks a bit sloppy. You know, you don't have a lot of vegetables in it, but still a hamburger, right? I don't think it was that bad to give a worst rating because of that was not tasty. But the main problem isn't actually what is in the burger. It's that no one knows what kind of meat this meat patty is made of. I actually personally went to the flight attendant with a hamburger in my hand and I asked them, hey, what kind of meat is, is it beef, pork and chicken? And she went like, I don't know. Simply. Any question you go and ask, you try. If you have a chance to go, please ask. They only give you one answer, unified answer. I don't know. Ask somebody else. So nobody knows if it's chicken or whatever. I think it's just mixed meat. I don't know. Anyway, I, I enjoyed it. That was quite nice. Okay, um, we are going to uh, begin our trip. It's just in case you get to visit one day. I'm sure you will after my talk is over because you will get to know they're not that bad. I've picked some place that would be good to go for you. We're going to start by Pyongyang and take the subway and go shopping. That's our plan. Then we're going to move to North Hamgyong province, visit schools there and e-library there too. You've got to see their computer as well. Then stay under the same roof with the North Korean locals for three days. So the Penghattan, it's really, I know it's a so well known, but I did not know as South Korean, we really don't get to see this side. So parallel universe, Manhattan on Ryeongmyang New Town, like people say. I'm sure you've heard a lot about this place already, yeah? Ryeongmyang was a jaw-dropping side for me personally. I've never seen or heard of this part of North Korea ever in my life. It is a bit of shameful confession, actually. It's really, I'm a little bit embarrassed now. I thought I would see a lot of begging children called gojebi in North Korea. Gojebi is their term um, denoting homeless children. So my first trip, my pocket was full of chocolate, candy bars, and $1 bills, and Chinese yen as well. So if I meet them, I, I was going to give them some food and some money. I'm not rich, by the way. I just want to give them a dollar or two. Can you imagine me looking at these skyscrapers with my pockets full of things I wanted to believe was mercy? Can you believe that? I was the whole time. I saw people of Pyongyang having their lunch break in the park on a nice, beautiful, sunny day. And, oh, I had their coffee too. Coffee was, oh my goodness, it was luxury. Really expensive, deluxe. So locals told me that they, um, North Korean people are starting to really enjoy coffee too, but still it's a very expensive item. Wouldn't you be really surprised by the price? I ordered cappuccino and I say 550 North Korean wine, and which you might think was inexpensive, but that price was changed to 5.5 US dollars. And that's really expensive coffee, a cup of coffee. Eh? Trust me, you will get a lot of moments where you go, oh, okay, oh, that moment, you will have that a lot. 
So apparently it's more expensive than that in South Korea and some Europe as well, according to some Europeans. I still remember European travelers complaining a lot about the coffee prices. The coffee taste wasn't too bad, though, but just the price was not very pretty at all. Um, the last time I visited this spot, Leormyeong Street, uh, was the most happening place, but I've heard there are even fancier places now um, being built. So it's really interesting to me as well. I'm gonna show you the photo. Okay, so I actually Googled those new towns after Tuk Tuk told me about this street and I had to really Google because otherwise I wouldn't be able to get photos of them. There is um, Gyeongnudong, a newly built upscale residential area in Pyongyang. The pictures at the top of this slide you're looking at these luxury terraced houses are set to be gifts given to exemplary contributors to the development of the North Korean government. So I don't know who they are, but must be very, very lucky to have these as a gift. They recently um, completed Songha district or Songshin district, whatever they call it in Eastern Pyongyang, which is the bottom line, takes care of about 50,000 new apartments trying to settle the capital city's housing needs. So I think they are trying their best, I guess. Uh, another area around the Gumsusan Palace of the Sun is being transformed into Pasang District and a new residential area has been built at the moment. But you know, I thought, as a person who visited the Gumsusan Palace, this area was forbidden to ordinary Pyongyang citizens because the Gumsusan Palace of the Sun is the place where the bodies of the mummies, right? The bodies of the past leaders are kept. I really went there and saw them before my eyes. It was unbelievable. But turning this area into a luxury residential area seems like a pretty nice idea or thing. I don't know. I'll tell you what, when this crazy COVID-19 era fades into history and they reopen their border, I definitely want to visit these beautiful, unexplored, gorgeous places. I'm going to do that. And I might get to have a chance to share my experience with you maybe next time. Next, I want to um, present uh, one of the essential parts of the travel experience. I uh, I used to be a chef too. I don't like cooking. I just, um, I was a chef, but I <laughs> enjoy the cooking. I often travel to other countries with the secondary but strong motivation to discover different cuisines and learn more about the people there. Food is culture and history of the nation anyway, yeah? I was expecting that if two Koreans were of the same ethnicity or the same people, the food would be the same, or if not, quite similar. That's what I expected to see and taste. I heard so much about North Korean's food shortage that I really wonder if I could eat properly. I bought a lot of instant food and stuff before I went in. Would you guys worry about food if you said you were going to travel to North Korea? Trust me, I wouldn't. Don't worry about that. Don't bring instant food, please, no. North Korean food was really the same uh, or similar to the food I grew up eating. Anyone who has tried Korean food will probably know we eat vegetable pickles called kimchi with every single meal. It was exactly the same there. I got the pickles on my plate every single meal, even the breakfast and lunch and dinner. You know what was interesting? Every meal except breakfast was served with the representative beer of North Korea. I don't know if you ever heard of it, Taedong River beer and soju. At lunch and dinner, dinner I can understand, but lunch, ooh, I don't know. But a lot of Europeans just go, went crazy drinking beer. First bottle is a free, but then second bottle, it's a dollar. So they thought it was cheap and they ordered so much. And on the bus, every time when we move, quiet, dead, sleeping. So for many Western tourists, there are vegetarian diets or special diets that care for people with allergies like peanuts. So don't worry too much if you have any, you know, allergies to food, they will work out for you. I also got to try the signature dish of North Korean, the cold noodles, whatever they call it. And then um, it was just nice. I try many times that in South Korea anyway, so not surprising. Here, I have a really special one, fried chicken and beer. You probably, maybe you wouldn't understand, but this is a trend in North South Korea at the moment. 
this was a really just a unique experience for me. We call chicken and beer chimag, and it's a perfect food pair beloved by many, many Koreans. And I love these two. When I came back to Korea, you know what I did to my friends? I told all of my friends that I would be the only Korean who tried chimag in North Korea. I still have these breaking moments. You know, I love this moment. Do you know why? There are so many popular restaurants in North Korea too. There are even restaurant tours. When it comes to Pyongyang's dog barbecue, this is the number one place. I heard there are about more than 100 kinds of dog meat dishes here, but we had this marinated grilled dog barbecue. It's Korean. We love this one anyway. It was scrumptious. It was beautiful. This was food that served in Kaesong. Kaesong is near uh, the DMZ, the capital of the Koryo dynasty long time ago. It was the king's food. As you can see in the photo, there were more than 10 side dishes along with steamed rice and soup. That was really nice. You know what I was uh, thinking every time I had food in North Korea? This is a very personal feeling and personal approach that, you know, not many people understand, may not understand really. Imagine me, a South Korean, ordinary person, packing my bag and passport in my pocket and having to change planes twice to just arrive at a new destination, just like I have done in the past. However, where I arrived, people who look just like me were using the same language I used and introduced the history of Korea and Joseon dynasty as our Korean history. Would you understand what I mean if I felt like um, there were two identical spaces existed at a different times? I don't know. That was the, how I felt, actually. It was a really strange feeling. Travel, I went there somewhere, but then, oh, it was just Korea. So it was a little bit shocking moment there. The picture of the food you're looking at now is actually breakfast, not dinner, not, not lunch. Breakfast we had at a hotel in North Hamgyong province. If you only consider the types and the quantity of food, North Hamgyong province was richer and more colorful than Pyongyang. That was really interesting. I thought Hamgyong province, oh, I may eat lots of vegetable and rice maybe three times a day, but no, oh my goodness. See, another oh my God moment I had with this breakfast picture. And this was the first lunch I had on my second trip as soon as I walked through that Dongmen Bridge in China. There are a lot of Chinese tourists too. Surprisingly, there are one day trip or like lunch trip. I couldn't believe the word lunch trip. Lunch tour? OMG. If South Koreans have family in North Korea, I can never actually meet them. But then these people doesn't have really um, a, a strong relationship, but then can go to have lunch and come back. I thought that was not really fair. Anyway, we can't miss out on the Taedong River beer here again. The beer was quite good, actually. Uh, if you ask me, it tasted similar to good compared to Korean wine, actually. It's better. This was our first dinner in North Hamgyong province. So you can say breakfast, lunch, and dinner throughout the journey were all huge. Now that I think of it, North Koreans just wanted to provide travelers with the best food that they could offer without any shortage. I don't know if they go hungry or not, but then for the travelers, we get to have lots of food. And I never felt hungry. And we um, all felt grateful for their sincere hospitality, of course. Um, this was a homestay home cooked meal that I'm going to talk about it later. It was my all time favorite because that food on the table uh, was what I ate before I left. So I thought if I close my eyes, I'll go, Mom, can I have another kimchi? Yeah, same miracle. Okay, we had dinner in Pyongyang on the first night and then we took a walk along the Miri Street, Future Street, if I translate it. Let me be really honest with you here. It's another personal process going on here. Very busy mind. I was quite shocked to see North Koreans taking taxis after dinner to go home. OMG. I never thought that it, I would travel to a place that, that I thought, I believed strongly, it would be full of starving people. Going to restaurants and eating dessert and take taxis go home. That was ironic. Really. How the hell did I ever think of North Korea? So why does such an extremely ordinary daily life like this seem so strange to me? I had a question, a lot of questions I raised myself. 
please don't get me wrong. I need to be really clarify this one. I'm not trying to argue that there are zero problems with North Koreans' current food shortage or human rights issues. No, not at all. But as a person who shares the same culture and history with them, I was very pleased to see such a developed side of North Korea. Although some may claim this is a showcase, Jay, just created by the North Korean regime to show it to the world. I don't care. I would have been really upset and sad if North Korea was just a place where starving people fill the street, as I had expected in the beginning. I would have been really sad. But looking at these beautiful cities, it's a showcase. Doesn't matter. I really loved it. I loved it that my people on the other side of the Korea was eating okay. At least even it's just the one part was okay. You know, that's my, you know, feeling, honest feeling. Okay, I'm going to move to the next tourist attraction now. I'm going to get very emotional when I start talking about it. Don't get me started on. Okay, so I brought a Korean logo here. Um, this is very interesting to me too. Did you get the logo? No, you did not. Oh, here it comes. Can anyone guess what kind of place this is just by looking at the logo? Of course, it's Korean, but think about it. Oh my God, you've been there, have you? Yeah, well, that's actually, yes, uh, Subway logo. I was going to give you a little tip, actually, before she say that. Um, the logo has the word G, the, the red big one, which is the first syllable of Chiha, which means underground. Yeah, that's the logo of North Korean Subway. I heard there is a different version of it, though it was the one I saw last in 2019. But you know what? <laughs> Let me throw a question again. I, I, well, did you guys know that there are subways in North Korea? I didn't. I didn't even know there was a subway in North Korea. And if there was any, I thought it was just eternal dark deep on the ground. This was the moment when I asked myself how much I underestimated North Korea and had only negative views without knowing them properly. I was embarrassed. Pyongyang Metro was, and probably is now, being redeveloped rapidly. For example, the Kazan station you see, when I visited in 2018, it looked like it was built a little while ago, probably early 70s. But it changed to a very modern, elegant one. When I revisit in just in seven months, seven months, guys, it rebuilt this building. Here I found something very, very common between the two Koreas. Both Koreas have so-called hurry, hurry cultures ingrained very deeply in their genes. It's our genes. Bali, bali, we call it, but hurry or everything quick. They call it Cholima. It's a name of a horse, I guess. It was Cholima mindset, they said. Um, as a Korean, I can say that it's a unique characteristic of the species that proves that we, two Koreas, have lived in one Korea for thousands of years. We cannot deny that when you look at this. Okay, so um, welcome to the Pyongyang Metro, guys, the deepest in the world. Commuters use the metro card. Oh my God. See that light green card on the right? That's the one that used when boarding and getting off the subway and it can be topped up. And it was shocking too. Pyongyang subway was also really crowded. I heard the Pyongyang metro is one of the deepest commuter system in the world. It was buried 100 meters underground. Three escalators were working and no one, no one was running or walking down them. South Korean subways are always busy, crazy with people on the move. But here, nobody actually walked. Amazing. That's one different. Okay. So as soon as I arrived at the station, the first thing I noticed was uh, that the inside of the station was super stylish. Like, wow. Showcase, you say that? Wow. I still have that expression because... Wow, you have these skills to build? Beautiful, right? With the um, dimly lit lighting, although that was not that dark, though, I had no problem using the subway. So I could see that beautiful lights on the ceiling and marble columns and paintings on the leaders of the walls. You know what is really different from uh, South Korea? He said there are a lot of commercial advertisements everywhere inside the station in South Korea, and but there is propaganda everywhere. So I asked this question to an Australian traveler. Hey, 
And North Koreans, aware that they are completely brainwashed by these propaganda concepts, do they really know I said this? I asked this question. And this guy replied, Jay, aren't we living unaware that we too are being brainwashed into something maybe? What he said to me that moment reaffirmed the view that life in a different environment from mine was never wrong, but just a different. So I learned a lesson to there too. Okay, so um, there are all uh, new trains and I've been on both. I was very lucky and the old ones a little backward, but it was well maintained, nice and clean. Yeah, so the left one's a new one. Nice, all right, no problem riding it. Okay, so, and then when you get out of the train subway station, I could see, or you will see many food kiosks selling street food outside the stations. We tried uh, bread, like ice cream and fake meat wrapped with uh, rice. I don't know if you know this. That's the one on the right. What's um, the wrapping is the fake meat made of tofu, I guess. And there's rice inside, a little bit of seasoned with the salt and pepper, I think. And then the, the red sauce is a kimchi sauce, I think it was. Okay, so we went shopping too. It was a place called Gwangbok Department Store on Gwangbok street here we could buy things in north korean currency for the first time we were told that travelers can never trade in north korean currency so foreign daily exchange rates are displayed here like that and the picture on the right hand side and shopping centers or hotels they change every time they went like they erase it and they put up the price up and down so i really don't know and then on the left the korean money so i got about five hundred thousand won. A lot of papers there. So anyway, um, there is a small currency exchange here. Uh, there's a rule though. You must change your money first and then shop. They don't take foreign currency there at the cashier. After shopping, you need to change the remaining North Korean money back to euros or dollars or yens. I changed about 40 euros. I don't remember exactly how much I changed. Um, then I got it with that much North Korean money. Unfortunately, in North Korea, we're never allowed to take pictures of soldiers and markets. I don't know why, but anyway, um, these are the things I bought. I'm going to show you the next uh, one. The prices are marked on the receipt next to it. I bought like snacks and instant food and cigarette was really expensive. And I bought lots of like soju as well. It cost me about 500,000. A lot of zeros there, North Korean one. So equals to about 40, 45 euros. You know, I'm, I'm really bad at math, so you're probably going to figure out alone. So I just I'm going to go over it next. The next thing I want to show you is the Chuche Tower. If you take the elevator to the top, you can see downtown North Korea. Not only me, but all the other travelers were surprised to see a side of North Korea that was completely different from what they had imagined. A German tourist came to me and said, Jay, I'm going to take a photo of this downtown of North Korea and take this photo to Germany. And I'm going to show my family and friends this picture of downtown and ask them, not telling them it's North Korea, ask them to guess which city it is from. She was pretty sure that no one would ever think this would be a city in North Korea. And I had the same thought. I went, wow, I lost a word to describe the moment I felt because I never ever really learn or heard or seen this side ever in my life. So another shocking moment there. Okay, now we're moving to North Hamgyong province. Um, but before that, I'm going to show you the rest areas in North Korea because that was really, really nice. You know what they sell in South Korea when you stop by rest areas? You can get just all sorts of food, like not snacks, really proper meals there. But here, I thought that was very nice. You can get fresh fruit and vegetables. That was amazing. I I thought that was a really great idea. So the fruits are just sold on wooden board there, and you can just pick the fruit you want. Nicely peeled fruit will be in your hand within a minute. They were selling um, other things too, actually. If you look at, um, yeah, that's what I got, the Korean watermelon. It was tasty. Warm, though, not refrigerated, but it was okay. You see there are a lot of people there, and, you know, the wooden board, and they have fruits and coffee and cereal and just so many things they they sell there. The funny thing was, 
I bought really, really many things from candy bars to cereal um, from made of corns or something. I bought them to just have a really chance to talk to them. The real Koreans, right? Not because I needed them. I don't need cereals of North Koreans. Other travelers, the Europeans, came to me and advised me, Jay, don't buy anything. The rest area, they're real expensive, Jay. We're going to go stop by the supermarket later on. I was aware of that too. But there's one thing they did not know and would never, ever understand. Unless they put their, sh- their, their feet on my shoes. How hard it is for an ordinary person born and raised in South Korea to have the opportunity to go or come to North Korea and walk around and talk to North Korean locals and asking how much this one is, they would never understand this. Would never, ever, because I did not understand that too. So that was a very emotional moment. Um, and I looked around. There were so many Chinese, so many Vietnamese, so many people, all different nationality. And I had this thought. Oh, my God. These people come and go so easily by just applying for a visa and pay just the money and come here when they want for vacation. When there's so many South Koreans that have family here, can never, ever meet their family members. You know, first time ever in my life that I had this moving, touching moment. And that was the moment that I understand the separation, the feeling. Yeah, that was a good education for me, actually. Okay, now. Let's go back to um, the Hamgyong province again. You get to visit schools outside Pyongyang. I have never been to a school in Pyongyang, but went to a few in Hange province um, that is close to South Korea and North Hamgyong province that we're going to talk about. So we just go and join their class and we had just talking time with them in English. They really enjoyed us. I think they did, really. They smiled a lot, you know. I found this really, really amusing. It was definitely 100% English class because we spoke in English and we had great free talking time, but there were physics books and notebooks on their desks. So maybe I was the only the one who noticed this because simply because I was the only the one tourist that can speak Korean and know Korean, right? Nobody knew there was a physics or whatever it's on the table. Maybe I think it was a physics class, but then it was just turned into an um, English class in a flickering moment when they heard that we were coming, I guess. They were had to prepare something for us. So this is the one. The physics books. Ooh. So these guys are supposed to be really smart. You know, I'm really not good at these kind of things. So, and I, there was a student, I, I asked him, can I take a look at your note? And he was like, yeah, go on. And can I take a photo? And he said, yeah, go on. But I spoke in Korean and he was like, yeah. And I said, I'm from the other side of Korea. And he went like, what? You know, both of us went, what? He told me that it was first time. And it's life to see a just normal North Korean person. Both the same. We went each other go, well, you North Korean? Well, you South Korean? That was really, that was a moment. That was a beautiful moment. Okay. We visited a, an elementary school in Pyong, Pyongsang. Um, it's close to Pyongyang as well. And it was a computer class too. Um, computer class. You're going to see that, um, the photo on the far right. It was funny time. All children were working really hard on the computers. So I wonder what they were uh, working on. So I went really close to them. And so then practicing typing, then I happened to see this little boy next to me doing something else. Uh, he was playing Tetris while the teacher was not watching. He cracked me up. It was a good laugh. You know, we could you. We could all use one in a rather uncomfortable environment where we feel we don't really fit in. I really needed one good laugh there. I actually said to myself when I saw him play, okay, they don't always treat their children so too harshly. That's good to know. Like I thought North Korean children grew up with the strict rules and abuse and a lot of, you know, discipline ones and stuff were going on, I thought. But then he was playing Tetris. How good was that? I really loved it. Okay, and the next one I visited was, oh, Fancy E Library, a two-story building. Um, it's in Changjin. Changjin, by the way, is um, the capital of North Hamgyang province and the country's third largest city, I guess. The ground floor is dedicated to the E part of the E Library, 
And there are several computer rooms there. About over 300 computers, they tell me they have. It's connected to the national intranet system. I don't know if they can use Wi Fi. I don't know, don't ask me, but intranet system there, helping students connect with other educational institutes or study houses. I don't know, libraries, who knows, around the country, within the country, I guess. So upstairs is a bit more library with rooms of books, reading areas, and more lecture rooms. You can ask for the books you want at the information desk. There's a lady there and helping you out. The first thing I noticed at the entrance of the reading room was a bookcase full of biography of their leader, Kim il Song. It's all about him. That was amazing. I thought it's a picture on、um, this side here. Probably can't read Korean, but then they say, yeah, all about Kim il Song there. Okay, well,、um, it's a, just a glimpse into a Changjin Street next one. There are just few traffic lights. I did not see one anyway, but say there's just one or two, let's say. So everyone just crosses the street on their own independently. Really, seriously, my way, highway. There are trucks coming, running, and just people stop right there. And when it disappears, they just walk as if there's nothing. That was adventurous to me. And it was really thrilling. Yeah, I love that. I love that. A lot of jaywalking going on here. Okay,、um, we stayed in this Changjin Foreign Guest House. You can see that on the left, far left, is a key. It's huge. You can use this weapon too. That was really heavy as well. You know what?、Um, the hotel itself wasn't too bad, but the problem was there was no hot water. Instead, there was a small sauna inside the hotel, the really small one, but, no, but most travelers didn't really use them and just took a cold shower. I, did, I really had a cold, quick shower.、Um, there was a small bookstore in the lobby as well, and this phrase written by Kim Il Sung, I'm not sure if you can read it because it's small. Uh, they call my eye says the book is a silent teacher and a companion in life. Whoa, I think he really liked books and he encouraged education, I guess. Now I really think of it now I'm talking because there was no hot water in Hamgyong province. We went to public bath houses two or three times while staying there in five days tour. I've been to massive state run bath called Unda Wan. You see that on the left one, the blue red things. It's Unda Wan. And then this area is called Gyeongsang. Um, district, I believe. I'm not sure what they call it, but anyway, a lot of people go there, and I saw a lot of locals taking bath as well. And I also went to a really fancy one, but I don't have that photo here in this talk. Okay, so the one you see in the picture, the entrance fee was about four US dollars. Some of us were unhappy because it was not included in the travel package price. We went to, we were forced, not forced, but we went to places where We had to pay extra a few times, like theaters and amusement park and you know, eating places and stuff. The public bath was one of them. So it was, anyway, it was for me, it was okay.、Um, it was full of people, but we were offered a private bathroom different from the locals. And the water was way too hot. It was about 53 to 62 degrees Celsius. So many North Koreans visit this place because the water contains some chemicals that really heals their, I don't know, pain, something. Anyway, that was a nice experience. Last but not least, guys, I want to introduce the homestay where I had the best time. It's a North Korea homestay village in the Mount Chilbo area. It's truly one of a kind. You should go if you get a chance. This is the only place in North Korea where you can stay with the locals and enjoy local life with、um, North Korean families who actually live there in the house. So I'm going to show you the house I stayed in for、um, three days.、Um, and as a little girl, I stayed with her and we slept together. She was really nice and funny. She taught me how to play the North Korean games and I did not understand a single word. They have a very strong accent in the, in the Hamgyong province. And it, House was very nice and clean. Oh, well, this is Chilbo. That's the main entrance. We say, yeah, guest house, village. There's a house, nice and clean. Do you see that wall mounted TV there? And a wire phone next to it, and smartphones on people's hands, a piano there, and an electric kettle. And the room looked somewhat strange to me again. This is another embarrassing moment. It's just a, nothing, isn't it? I don't know if it, this is because I've never seen or learned how they live or because I wasn't interested in their lives. 
But all these little things throughout the whole journey shook me, literally shook me. It would be precise to say that I felt shame for my ignorance. Yeah, I can say that for sure. Okay, this is the kitchen. The kitchen was a little different. Old style cooking stoves were installed on the kitchen floor. So they had to actually squat for a long time to cook. Imagine cooking in that position for hours. Anyway, I've seen that kind of, what do you call it, finesse? I don't know the word, but anyway, the cooking stove, the old style in the museum before. So looking at them in person for the first time, I felt like I was traveling in the past, making me feel very exceptional there. I'll show you the room I stayed in. I hope this plays okay. This is a video. So this is where it's at. So we're staying two nights over there. Yeah. You see the firewood next to it? 나무. Yeah. And there is a dock. Oh, oh, oh. And they have a little backyard. Yeah. And this is room um, where my roommate and I stayed together. You know, you see the blankets there, and a the table there, and the room's atmosphere is almost the same as the environment I grew up in. The bathroom, you're going to see that now, soon. Do you see that the red and blue, big, that, the, what do you call it? Bucket or basket. There's no hot water there too. It's feeling like cold water. So we had to add boiling water every time we used the water. And that gigantic container. And shower and brush teeth and wash hair and do everything in just one container. That's a nice way to survive. I liked it. Okay. You know what we did? For three days, we went on a boat and it caught seafood with the locals. When it was low tide, we waited for the time. And some of us went there, um, picked sea urchin and sea cucumber with their bare hands. It wasn't for me. I don't think that kind of activity. So I just enjoy watching them having a good time. But anyway, we caught lots of uh, seafood there. We also play a lot of sports. North Koreans were really good at sports. And you know what? They had a strong competitive spirit there. They played passionately the whole time. No jokes. It was just play, but then no, they take it really seriously. And they won in every game. Well, they enjoy, I believe. <laughs> anyway. Okay. There was, um, I told you about this little girl, 80-year-old child in the house I stayed. She played the piano for us at dinner. It was beautiful. She sang and danced for us too. And demonstrated the latest hairstyle of North Hamung to some male tourists. She only picked the males. So it was a funny moment. She got all this nice, beautiful pinky pen and pins and everywhere in the males' um, hair. And, and they really let her do that things. Nice, kind people. Anyway, this is the last video I want to share. So for three days, spent beautiful time with this lot of people, and I, I oh, went on a boat. That was the boat I was talking about. Small, with a lot of people. So I was very scared, actually. This is a guy, one of the guys. It's a really nice one, a friendly, cute, and it's just a thoughtful, perfect guy. They're singing song that brings out the beauty of Mount Chuto and the Eastern Sea. It was the best cruise tour of my life, actually. There was a cruise, I'll say. This is a moment, um, yeah, we got to catch all these sea urchins and we really caught some and try on the spot. Mm. 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 Mm
Yeah. See that? Fresh and... I got to try the first one. Real dark is um, one spoon used 18 people there. So, ooh, I was the first one used to... This is the first time. <laughs> Making a traditional <laughs> rice cake there. And all foreigners watching it. Curiously, and a lot of hard work there. I don't think they really make that cake like they did um, now. I think they just want to demonstrate. So I got to learn how to make them from the scratch. And I was wondering if uh, they call potato a different word, but I was wrong. Because I didn't understand the ingredients of one of the potatoes. Anyway, we're wow. making noodles. See it's kitchen there? Yeah. The hard work they just do. You know, I could not understand what they really said. It's a really strong accent. And at night time, oh no, spoons. <laughs> the one on the left is um, Korean tour, North Korean. Very competitive. Yeah. At one go, done. <laughs> And we play um, sports too. <laughs> On the last day, we got together and sang, danced, drank, and ate special grilled clams on fire. It's the Korean song. So we had to dance actually. I was forced to dance. But we had pleasant time. That's the beer. It's another tour guide. <laughs> so we went a um, little. And there's a driver, my favorite guy is driver. And a, um, <laughs> he had his time there too. Yeah. You know, seeing this video makes me really miss them very much. They're all my brothers and sisters. <laughs> Someday, we could be one again. Yeah. Hope I can see them again. And in just one Korea. Yeah, you know the last uh, moment. Um, she, the little, um, she, the um, youngest tour guide. Um, she cried a lot, and it got me really, really emotional too. And yeah, I had this um a feeling that I really um hard to describe. Um, yeah, I don't know how to describe. I, there's no word I can find now. Well, I guess it's time to wrap up my travel story here. Thank you all for taking your important time to listen to my account you know i once listened to a lecture by a Niger nigerian author her name is long i'm not sure if i can pronounce it well chmanda ngoji edichie um called the danger of a single story you can find her talk on ted talk it was a story of her own experience as an african born and raised kid moving to america to study she learned a very important life lesson when she noticed that her first white classmates described Africa as a place filled with people living in poverty, starvation, and suffering. Impressionable and valuable we are in the face of a story, knowing only one part of a story about a country or person and believing it's the whole story, and that can easily let us risk a critical misunderstanding. I grew up seeing and hearing different versions of this single story about North Korea throughout mass media and from my parents' education too. I can never say that I learned everything about North Korea in just two trips, but those two trips taught me a very valuable lesson. There are people who looked like me, talked like me, and acted like me, saying Joseon Dynasty was our history. 
So what this discovery of the North Korea tour did for me was this. It saved me from having a single story of what North Koreans are like. So now I have my different perspective to look at my North Korean friends and family that I miss a lot. And that's what the tour has given me. So that's, and I'm here to share that process of change or shifting of the views with you and hope you will really enjoy um, the talk. And one day I really hope you can make the nice, beautiful tour like I did when the COVID-19 goes away.